record on this computer. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's uh, presentation. I am going to actually play an old podcast where I'm being interviewed because I figured that you know we we have a new uh, guest on here today, and figured you guys should know a little bit more about me. So. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to play that interview. This interview was done by a good friend of mine. His name is Robin Christofferson. You guys may know him from a podcast called Dot to Dot. And uh, so without any VLC. With, without any further ado, uh, Robin, take it away. Play. Hello there. So this is slightly weird because I am the host this week for the Technology Wizard podcast. And I am going to interview... Sean. So, <laughs> a bit of a role reversal here because I have been on the Technology Podcast, Technology Wizard Podcast before, um, because I host a podcast called Dot the Dot, which is about the Echo, and now we're um, switching round. So, uh, Sean has very kindly let me interview him to uh, say thank you for the um, doing it the other way around. So, tell us about of oh, Sean for people that don't know already. Sure, I'd be happy to. So I am from Michigan, that of course is in the U.S., and I am currently uh, going to college or university, depending on where you're from, um, <laughs> for a certification in computer support services and help desk. Cool. So what was life like for you growing up? What's technology do you use? Have you been visually impaired all your life? So, uh, I have been, I am blind since about three to six months. So I don't have any memories of, of uh, seeing anything. Right. And uh, as far as technology goes for me, I think at the time I thought, oh man, my friends, you know, they have all this awesome technology and i'm just here in the dust but um but now i'm very grateful that it worked out this way but uh to answer the question te the technology that we that i had was a perkins brailler and so that was uh it for a long while until my braille skills got up to par and i uh, got to move on to the Braille in print. Cool. So what eye condition is it that you've got? Retinopathy of prematurity or ROP. Okay. So it went pretty quickly between sort of three and six months. It did. Yes. Yep. And did you go to a specialist school or? I mainstream? went to an, okay. So, so for the elementary years, I went to a school called Durant Terry Mott and they are it's a school with a lot of different special education needs so there was a classroom uh, dedicated I'm sorry there were two classrooms dedicated to the blind and visually impaired so it was kind of interesting because you would go in this classroom and about nine to twelve people and all different age levels all different mentality levels um so you got more one-on-one -on -one time i think uh than you would have in say uh mainstream uh classes mm -hmm. um so that was nice even though sometimes i think I thought, oh, you know, um, I kind of wish I could do things that uh, my brothers uh, could do. But, uh, you know, at, the, at that time, I didn't really know much about what everybody else did. Meaning, what I, what I mean by that is I, I was kind of, I was kind of in, uh, I was in a classroom with a lot of different uh, disabilities and mentality issues as I've said so I did when I was in when I went to mainstream school um, 
I kind of, uh, it, it was kind of, it was a very, it was kind of a rude awakening because mm. in the Flint area and in, and uh, just, I guess, uh, in that area in general, it went fat. Uh, the it, I'm sorry, it went much, much slower. And I was able to work at my own pace and I didn't, I would get homework on the weekend sometimes. Sometimes I would not. Um, I'm sure my brothers were pretty jealous of that. I have one older, <laughs> one younger brother, so, you know, I'm in the middle. Um, and so uh, once, but but once uh, element, or I'm sorry, once uh, middle school hit, uh, it was like, wham. It was going from like some, you know, very, very slow to all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't believe I have all this homework and... <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, I tell people, you know, the, um, I, I say, you know, the, the, the Flint schools, they just weren't, they just weren't very fast. They, they were, it, it was slow pace. Um, and then, uh, it was rough at first in middle school, but then, uh, it, things smoothed out, I think after a couple of years, it, it was always rough during high school and <laughs> even, and you just had your Perkins in in the classroom. I did have my Perkins in the in the elementary classroom, and then I had a, the Braille in print, which I don't know if uh -huh. you know what that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They were good. Oh good yeah. Perkins. But then once I moved into the uh, see, there was the the younger level of VI blind students, and there was the older level. So I actually had two different classrooms. And um, once I moved in there, after a little while even in there, um, I, got, I was introduced to the Braille and Speak Scholar. And I actually have one on a shelf right by me that, uh, st that with the battery change actually could still work. <laughs> so obviously technology has come on in leaps and bounds and then this podcasting thing came along and um a lot of people with a vision impairment are obviously into podcasting they're absolutely brilliant so where for you did podcasting start and where kind of did you get the idea of thinking well maybe i this is something that i'd like to do oh i'd be glad that, to answer that question um so i was always fascinated by uh, uh gentleman that I'm sure a lot of uh, the listeners will know, Jonathan Mosen. I was always fascinated by his main menu shows, um, uh, that is ACB Radio main menu, uh, and the technology uh, part. And also, my father works uh, with IT, and so he, uh, I, I, th I think it was... My father and um, I would hear my visually impaired um, teacher, who is visually impaired herself, I would hear her use uh, things like JAWS, ZoomText, Kurzweil. And so um, I just, I had an empower as a, um, a Braille note empower, that is. And I think where really podcasting came into play was I. <laughs> I first started recording my podcasts, just things that I would, tr or shows, little shows I would try to do. I started recording them on cassette tapes because when I was growing up, I loved recording myself on cassette tapes. So I had, so I had a blank tape and I said, all right, uh, how about I record uh, three shows? I, I was working at a place called uh, Actions Accessibility, I think it, I think, think it is. And uh, I said, all right, hey, uh, would you mind, or I asked the person I was working for, would you mind if I recorded uh, a few podcasts and have you listen to them, give me some feedback? I did that, and he gave me some feedback. Uh, and so I approached a great friend of mine uh, Kevin Andrews, who is the webmaster for this site, and I said, 
uh, we were we were at a conference, and I said, "Hey, Kevin, um, you know, it'd be cool to start a website." And he said, "Oh, yeah, yeah, it would." Uh, I I said, "It'd be and it'd be cool to have a podcast," and he agreed. I said, "But we need to have a name for our podcast." And then, so we so I th I thought about it, started thinking about it, and I said, "Well." What about Technology Wizard? And he said, "Yeah, that's actually great." And um, you know, because I wanted a, a podcast dedicated to technology, and uh, so the name was formed. But obviously, we had to get more than just the name. We had to. Um, our our first podcast was on the Samsung the Samsung Gleam uh, cell phone. It's a mm -hmm. flip. It was a flip phone. Which had surprisingly great um, menu navigation for 2008. Is um, that when it was, or did you? When we did? When did you do your first podcast on that? How long did it been out? Oh yeah, yep. It was uh, it was 2008. Um, wow. And you're a veteran. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, trust me, they 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 were not uh, good podcasts. They were. Uh, <laughs> They were horrific, and there two of them only were good enough that I'd say, okay, it can go on tech info. So uh, we we would do things like um, uh, podcast on the Braille No Empower podcast on. Oh, you got a Victor Stream? Okay, yeah, let's do a podcast on the Victor Stream uh, podcast on whatever we could get our hands on. Um, uh, just because Kevin and I are have always been geeky, techy, blind enthusiasts, so uh, uh, the the podcast didn't really start to I guess present itself I guess you would say um, until tech dash or I apologize till until tech wizard dot info without the hyphen in the middle, and that was because I think because we were jumping from FTP server to FTP. FTP, for those of you who don't know, is File Transfer Protocol. And uh, anyway, we jumped from server to server, borrowed a friend's um, server space, and finally, Kevin, uh, I, he got a virtual private um, server, VPS, for Christmas. And so we <laughs> made it to techwizard.info. And then, unfortunately, um, uh, well, at the time, I wasn't going to college, and then uh, Kevin started going to college, so we had to shut the site down. But the podcaster in me never left. So I would podcast from host to host, and uh, and I would appear on, I appeared on Main Menu with Kevin. I think we appeared three times. Um, uh, and... So I would go from say I don't know if you knew, if you ever had a chance to visit uh, Blind Cool Tech. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah, love them. Really good. I think you are Ooh. asking for the song "Steps Forward." <laughs> Alexa, Too kind of yeah. Stop. Is that right? Alexa, <laughs> stop. Oh, I'm so sorry. No idea what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> we can redo that bit if you like, but oh. yes, no. Oh Blind no, cool... Bloop, no, <laughs> bloopers are good. Blind cool tech, absolutely. Oh, cool blind tech before. Um, Larry Scootcon. That's it. That's Great it. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Larry, Larry Scootcon. And so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Whichever, whichever way, yeah. or whichever speech synthesizer you're, you're using. Yep, Scutcheon. Yeah. Yep, and. Uh, I, I actually met Larry Skookon in uh, 2010 at the NFB convention, and mm -hmm. we were talking about the Braille Plus and what it could do, and it was, it, it's, you know, you hear of these uh, individuals, but you never really get to put a face on it, and so when you meet them, it's like this kind of wow factor, because it's like, whoa. I just had a twenty-minute conversation with Jonathan Mosen, or yeah. you, you know, and uh, um, that 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 They're was nice. Celebrities, aren't they? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Most most definitely, most definitely. But so, what happened to the original? 
Tech Wizard website, it was shut down? That one was shut down, correct. And uh, so I went to places um, like uh, the uh, uh, Blind Cool Tech. Uh, I, I'm big into laser tag, as you can see if you look in the <laughs> archives. So I did a, a very poor, poorly done podcast on uh, one of the uh, laser tag type blast or uh, pistols that I reviewed not too long ago, which was thankfully a lot better. Um, practice makes perfect. But anyway, <laughs> uh, that that was done in 2010, I think, 20 2011, something of that nature. But I yeah, I just I kept I kept podcasting, and then uh, and then Kevin approached me, 2015 maybe I think it is. Or I think it was. Uh, he said, uh, "Hey, I, I'm, I have some free time. Why don't I, why don't I set up Tech Wizard Info?" And uh, I said, "Oh yeah, that'd be cool." And I was previously um, doing shows for a web, a podcast called Edified Access, and so uh, my friend at Edified Access, Matt Barnhill, he hosted a uh, technology wizard so i am i am supposing that kevin took a look at uh the feed generator which is podcast feed generator and he thought oh yeah that that's not really hard, that hard to do so uh things went uh very well when the site was under our control so we took tech-wizard.info and made it into what it is today Cool. So you guys kind of rolled your own, and this was probably in the time before there were a, f a good number of off-the-shelf podcasting sites where, you know, it's <laughs> pretty easy these days for people to decide that they want to be a podcaster, get an idea, record something, and then, you know, easily upload it to a site that is sort of ready-made for you. I know that there are lots of benefits of having your own domain and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, so you were kind of getting into HTML and getting your hands dirty in the code, etc. Oh yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, not the, I'm not the webmaster, Kevin's the webmaster, but yeah, I, we, we wanted our own site. We didn't, we didn't I mean, up, uploading to sites is fine, but we wanted just our own space and yeah our own podcast and i that was i i remember uh actually i was listening to the uh samson gleam podcast <laughs> and uh i was we we're sh i was showing how you could read text actually kevin was doing it because my samson gleam was charging at the moment why i couldn't have gone and got it from its charger <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> 2008 stuff but anyway um so Kevin was showing how you could read text, and one of the texts I had sent was, how's the site? And at that time, it was something like technologywizard.t35 <laughs> something, some, something mb.org or something like that. Some ad-filled site with our podcast, and they would be separated by headings, and they are now, if, if I'm not mistaken, but now we have our own feed, which we did not have in the techwizard.info. Uh, stage and since then obviously many many podcasts under the under your belt on loads of different technology related issues but in many well in several of them you've mentioned also that you have another disability as well as a vision impairment is that something you want to just touch upon sure sure um yeah so it, i do um mention quite a bit that i have another disability because uh i there i have uh throughout throughout my life there have been a, a few times where people have noticed and they've uh cracked jokes or, or said something unkind so i tend to let people know that i do have another another disability and what that disability is it's it is epilepsy but before uh the listeners say whoa epilepsy oh no it's it's not the epilepsy that people first associate when they hear the word seizure, people first associate that word um, with 
with flopping around, with uh, uh, with seizing up, having to call nine one one, stuff like that. Those are grand mal seizures. I don't have those. I have what are called simple partial seizures. So those are where I may say to an individual, just a second. And if it's a friend, I'll say, oh, yeah, I just I just had an episode. Um, but basically all that happens is I can still hear what you're saying. I can still, I'm still aware of what's going on. I've mm. told people things that they've said during the episode and they're saying, wow, you can remember that? I said, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I just can't. I, I will either talk slower or I sometimes can't talk. Um, but that is why you may hear me stammer. And I don't edit the... I, if it's... I, I don't think there's been one that's been really bad where I've had to edit it out. But I figured, you know, this is Sean Williams. This is who he <laughs> is. You know, it's this is what you're going to get. You know, I yeah. I do the best that I can, and it's frustrating, but you know, because I'm sure you're waiting for those for the uh, for the for the self driving cars, but I don't know, you know, what type of laws will be in place when they come out, and hopefully I'll be able to drive one. But if I if I can't, then I'm no worse off than I am now, and there are a lot of people that are worse off than I am. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think by definition, these self-driving cars, for them to be commercially viable, are going to have to transport a lot of people in a lot of conditions, you know, including people that have had a really good night out. So, you know, I oh, think yeah. that there yeah. can't be any level of responsibility whatsoever assumed on the part of the uh, passengers. So I think we're OK. So is that the same as pretty more like this, you know, minor seizures that just happen many times a day? Um, I do not believe so. Uh, these ones, as I've, as I've stated, um, they're, they're ones where I, they do happen multiple times a day, but, uh, sometimes they, I believe they've, they've even happened during podcasts, but I just, you just don't notice it. Mm -hmm. Um, the, they just happen and I will... Like I can still walk and stuff like that too when they when they happen whether I should, wow. well, okay I decide that but <laughs> but I've <laughs> I've like I I know where I need to go my steps maybe I may be a little bit more Vince's uh, hand has been uh, raised Zoom U S has new window up, and then I'm back to normal there have been there will be very few times but there will be like sometimes where I will have an episode where I it is within everyone's best interest if I take a nap because they tire me out. But mm -hmm. for the most part, I just grin and bear it and just go on with my life. So when you've got a combination of disabilities, uh, vision impairment and, you know, the seizures, the, the mild seizures that happen quite often, is there any specific, you know, considerations that you need to bear in mind are there any u unique challenges in having both of those? There is for me. So with the simple partial um, seizures, that allows I can I am able to go to college, and it's not and um, but I cannot take a full degree because I um, I only I can take up to maybe like two to three classes. Um, and then, so, but I'm doing quite well in college actually, uh, and I can still function within those classes just like anybody else. I just, mm -hmm. um, be, because of, I guess the, I don't know, severity is the right word, but the, the amount of, uh, simple partials that I have, um, it makes it so I can't take a full class load. And, uh, yeah, that the, uh, it's, it's an interesting, it's, it's interesting to, um, and, and fun to be able to, <laughs> to go to college, but, you know, at the same time, you know, I'm not, Hey, I'm not in a degree, but at least I'm getting a certification, which makes me happy because, 
Mm -hmm. I don't like sitting at home. <laughs> Vin's hand has been lowered. Yeah. So, for the people that have got multiple difficulties or challenges on their plate, is there any particular advice, you know, coping strategies, etc., that you would recommend that you've learned from? Is it like take, take don't take on too much, or? I would say, for those who have multiple disabilities, and I, I would just say, well. Think about all the good things. Like, think about, you know, you have these, this, these these disabilities, but don't let those disabilities get you down. I mean, obviously, that's not always easy to do. Just try to strive to be the best person that you can be and have a positive attitude. That's, that's what I would say. I would say, you know, if I'm frustrated about something and I have a negative attitude then chances are the amount of work that uh, would it have uh, gotten finished uh, would have been or would be a lot less if I had a negative attitude versus a positive attitude. I would I would get a lot more accomplished. Here, here. Yeah. I mean, we all have to, to deal with what you know, got <laughs> presented to us, so. Exactly, we have to yeah, deal make with the best of it. Yeah. Yep. And you mentioned earlier about all those different devices that um, you've reviewed over the years. I mean, technology has come on such a long way, and, you know, we're dealing with devices that are much more mainstream, much more powerful, much more affordable, and that's got to help, hasn't it? You know, we're so lucky, and that's part of how we can be grateful for you know, living into the age that we live in today because technology is so empowering and helps us get over some of the challenges that we have as disabled people. And, yeah, we, we have a lot to be thankful for. Exactly, exactly. Um, yes, the the technology has definitely gotten a lot um, cheaper because, you know, in 2008... 2009 they were great products but you had to if you wanted a truly accessible phone i'm sure that you're that you will remember that you had to get either talks or mobile speak and those would run on the symbian platforms or windows mobile and uh yep. you know the flip phones they would only do so much but i just happened to stumble Actually, I was with my father, and uh, we stumbled on it together, I suppose you could say. Uh, and this one just happened to read a lot of menus. But then, um, yeah, I think I think we're in a, a very fortunate um, age where we can, we can buy mainstream off-the-shelf technology. And, for example, um, well... Uh, for example, I have a habit of not finishing my sentences. <laughs> um, we can buy uh, mainstream technology and uh, have it work out of the box. If not totally accessible, then reasonably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, cool. uh, I think yeah, Apple's like the only the, thing uh, Roku, that... To the... uh, devices, those are... Yeah, or the Fire TVs or... Well, any, yeah, almost any device these days has thanks to apple kind of trailblazing the importance of accessibility and how how it can be done really really well not just like a token gesture then you know everything else has sort of upped its game alert so yeah we're low really, battery really fortunate to be living in a time of time of choice oh yeah so the technology wizard website and podcast have an awful lot of information about these different technologies and you know people should uh, are benefiting greatly from those they're brilliant resources so how can people who don't already know get in contact with you uh you know how can they where can they find the website if they were feeling so inclined how could they help support the uh brilliant endeavors that you guys are doing sure i'd be glad to tell you about that so you can always visit our website at tech-wizard.info, and uh, we do we do accept donations. Um, the site doesn't it doesn't pay for itself, obviously. Um, so any any donations would be very uh, 
helpful. And there's a donate uh, link on our page and our site's very accessible. Um, though if you don't want to go to our site, uh, okay. Uh, we are in the iTunes store. We are on OO Tunes or Utunes, however you want to say it. Um, we are in TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, and we are on the AnyPod skill for the A Lady uh, devices, A L E X A. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you have one of those devices, you can just say A Lady, play the podcast Technology Wizard, and she'll play it using the default which I believe is tune in. So yep. all will be all will be well. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Sean. That was really cool. If not a little weird because there was a role reversal going on here. And even though I do have this podcast of my own or our own, because there are lots of listeners that contribute skill demos of the Amazon Echoes to I'm not kind of a host and I don't <laughs> never done this kind of hosting thing before. So that probably comes across loud and clear. But anyway, really, really appreciate that giving me the opportunity to find out more about your life, your tech, your projects, and please keep up the good work. Um, you know, the technology is going to always be there and become more and more exciting. And the Technology Wizard website and podcast are definitely the places to find out about those cool things. Thanks, Sean. Oh, no problem. Thank, thank you very much for taking my chair for a change. A pleasure. Thanks. Vertical splitter. Zoom. Zoom. Us. Zoom meeting window. Close button. Hello there. Okay, I'm I'm back. And uh, Vince, I saw that you had your your hair. Sorry, your hand raised. Yeah, uh, I didn't. I didn't know it was a recording. <laughs> oh no, no problem. No, <laughs> when those when those interfaces are <clears throat> when, when you use an interface, you you don't know that that it's a recording. It's it's amazing, actually. <laughs> no, I was just gonna I was just gonna say about the, uh, you know, you're talking about the. Uh, "Quote unquote self driving cars." Yeah, mm -hmm. That would be nice to have, but uh, you still gotta be—you gotta have a, some vision, you know, to operate them right now until cars start talking to one another. Yep. yep. And then you know maybe some. And you know what? I don't even know if they're if they're able to run in that mode in neighborhoods because I know they they still were having problems with detecting like balls bouncing onto the street. In case there's a little kid chasing that ball. Or things coming out, from, you know, from between two parked cars. So I don't know how far the technology has gotten in that and detecting those little things. Right. Yeah. It's it's it, it'll it'll be interesting when we can have those cars. Yeah. Definitely. Really. Uh, this is Reg, and uh, while I was listening to that, I kind of went out to Overcast to see if I could find the inactive feed but was because i figured there's probably still a lot of good stuff on there and uh but i, I found a tech wizard some dude named george summers but it definitely wasn't you <laughs> <laughs> no no that that would not be me <laughs> but the other thing i wanted to mention because you were talking about those old flip phones that had some good accessibility and i fought getting the iphone for a really long time until a friend of mine came over with the Omo, Omobi or whatever it was and yeah, identified I a, a beer can in my refrigerator. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. But the, the first phone that I had that I kept for years that I thought would do everything I wanted it to do was the Sanyo phone. And you could you could record tags for like up to 20 different people that called in your own voice. So your phone would holler at you, you know. Jose, it's on the phone, <laughs> and of course everybody <laughs> would hear it. You know, but, um, it was a great phone, and, it, and you could go through the menus and get to the functions. And one of them had this uh, a flip phone had this function where you could like whistle or hum a song, and it would like turn it into a a, a melody or whatever. 
Huh. Just really That's weird things on these old phones. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm surprised nobody's made an app for, to do that. Just have fun with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that would be interesting. <clears throat> Definitely. Hey, Anybody can I have any... Oh, sorry? Hey, it's Lynette. How you doing? Good. How, how about you? Hello. 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 Hi, Lynette. Hey, all. <laughs> um, two things. Oh, stop. It's smart news. It's not smart right now. Uh, you know, you, you just can't... Have you found folks with the turning the speech off and on when you're trying to... <laughs> okay, now, see, I was going... Oh, um, oh, you were talking to Robin from Dot to Dot. Uh-huh. And I was going to say something, and all that blathering of my speech made me forget. Oh, Jonathan Mosen, Mosen at large, was bring, uh, brought up the, and you might have heard about the whole uh, driverless car thing, and not well, not driverless, but you know, mm -hmm. the, those automated cars. And he was he he got into the whole ethics of it and all of that kind of thing. But how would you know people might want to blame the car and blah blah blah? It's very uh, it was, it was <clears> a, a little interesting. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I'm not ready to do. I don't know if I'm. Sometimes I think I'd like a, a driverless car, but no, I think I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't trust myself. <laughs> the car would be doing all the work. <laughs> oh, well, that's yeah. the point of the driver of the car doing it, you know, so you could just chill. That's true. <clears throat> I could chill my way right to heaven too. <laughs> <laughs> or the other way. Well, you know. A, a, a few weeks ago, I heard a story on the on, on the on the radio up in Canada. And there was a guy that was in one of those uh, Teslas, and he oh. was actually taking a nap. Oh! And the and the police saw him, so they started chasing the car to to, to wake the guy up. And the car picked up speed. Oh! <laughs> to get away from the from the cop. So I'm thinking the, the car probably had a warrant out for it or something, you know. So I was trying to get away from the cops, so I was afraid of the cops or something, but. But they said it got up to 93 miles an hour before they oh, actually, no. you know, somehow get the guy to wake up. <laughs> you know? wow. Oh, that's funny. And oh, that's the no. problem. With, Responsible. And that's that one is. of the things with, with it, you know, <laughs> that people, people had the tendency to do things like that. Because out here in Tempe, Arizona, we had the, um, someone hit by one of those cars because the guy, uh, the lady behind it was messing around with her computer, wasn't paying attention uh -oh. to uh, a pedestrian, so... But I think what well, people forget is that you're not supposed to not pay attention. You can't, that, but, but that's the way people just, are, though. That's to say again? Huh? That's the way people are when they hear self anything. You know, it's when you have a perfect. machine doing something to itself. Yeah. You know, they're not going to pay attention. They just you know? automatically assume it's going to work the way it's supposed to work. And yeah. It doesn't always happen <laughs> that way. But to, right. be, but to be but to be fair, the lady that was hit, she was also in the wrong. So she was humiliated. Yeah, so well, she well, was not even paying attention. Well, you had the one out in California last year where the, 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 actually the, the machine, the, the car actually had a blind spot and it hit a truck. And was in the bright sunlight, the truck is white and some oh, of the car just failed. Killed him. Him. Yeah, I heard about uh, that. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, yeah. did he, he got killed? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he was God. he was actually a tester of self-driving car, mm -hmm. and that was a situation where he wasn't paying attention where maybe it could have been prevented. Uh, the the one in Arizona that I heard about, I, I believe it was in the middle of the night, and the person was trying to cross the highway. Um, oh, might have been homeless or something like that, but yeah. it, was, it was a dark situation, and there's a lot yep. of things. And they're still working on the software. I mean, they're, they're going to get better, and the roads have got to get better to give more information to yeah. the cars, which is not that expensive to do. And I really do think that it, we're going to have them eventually, hopefully mm. in our lifetime. Well, it's going to happen. In fact, I, yeah. I just heard a report a couple weeks ago that in about two or three years, the Japanese expect to have flying cars. Oh, oh Lord. boy. That's all we need. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, jeez. I wouldn't want to be under one. Yeah, uh, right. No. <laughs> Especially because somebody likes to spit out the window. Huh? <laughs> well, not only that, a bunch of, those, bunch of those flying around and somebody runs out of power, you know, that's not I don't good. Know. Yeah. 
Are they calling them flying taxis or something? I think they're wanting to come out with something like, I am not flying in any taxi. I'm barely going in a taxi period today. <laughs> Uber has on the ground or any other way. Say again, I'm sorry. I think Uber has a flying service or something over there, right? And I don't know if it's self I, self flying or not. They're actually, they're working. They're not self flying, but they're working on helicopters. Yes. Oh, is that what it is? Right. Yeah. Thank you. I knew uh, Uber was working on something to go in the air, but I couldn't. <laughs> well, oh, I mean, that would be better than an airplane because you could get to more places. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I. You. You know. You guys <laughs> had it. <laughs> I, I'm good with our bus and you know bus train and car system here in New York City. It's all good. <laughs> right. <laughs> bus trains and planes. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Plenty I'm moving. Yeah. <laughs> I wondered if she was from New York. <laughs> well, <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me, but. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wonderful. I wanted to tell. Um, so, if anybody, because I, if I, I. Does anybody remember, um, and I know I'm just being lazy here, um, uh, Mr. Dot to Dot there? Robin Christopherson? Uh, Robin, no, I've never Robin, heard of him. Thank you, Robin. And uh, mm -hmm. he's the email address. I know he's always saying, oh, you can email me at dot to dot at gmail.com or something like that. Does that sound familiar? Uh, I think it's Robin Christopherson at gmail.com. Oh, Robin Chris. Oh, Lord. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'll, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure about that. that. I, I do know that the, web, the, the, the podcast is called Dot to Dot. Yep. That I, that I got. Yeah. But I know he gives a, an email at the end, but, you know, one is listening and half not listening at that point. <laughs> <laughs> He's incredible with those things. Oh, my gracious. I'm sorry I missed the beginning of it, but... <sighs> now, are these ever recorded or are they just... They are. On... Oh, and where do... Are, are they archived somewhere that we can go? Yeah, they're posted yes. on YouTube. Yep. yep. Are... So, I heard the song... <laughs> Right. <laughs> They're oh, posted okay. on YouTube. They're posted on YouTube. Okay, thanks. Oh, okay. Yep. Just type in Technology <laughs> Wizard and you'll find the channel. And they're that, under. You know what? You're right. I. Where is my mind? I have been there. I was there last week. Thank you. I just couldn't remember in the moment. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Oh, no problem. Much. It's okay. Right, I have not been wizard. there yet. I'm going to have to go check it out. Yeah, it's cool. Me too. I'll just get subscribed. Yeah. So yeah, those, those those thanks, thanks for temporarily and... losing your mind. You gave me some knowledge I did not have. Yeah, so <laughs> subscribe and choose and 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 choose to get all notifications. Yeah, oh, is that there's... on the web too? You, you can do that there as well. In the you can do that on on YouTube as well. And yeah, uh... the notification selector, I believe. Yeah, okay. yeah. Hit the bell. They always say, and voiceover doesn't tell us there's a bell there. But we'll... <laughs> hey. oh well. Oh, you just get hit the like button. Why somebody gives you that? Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> Did you say the M I K mic button? Did you? No, like, like. Oh, the like. L I K E. Yeah, okay, L I K E. Gotcha. Thank you. Gotcha. I'm glad. And you can I get asked. on the computer as well. The like button. You get like something on the computer. It's that's that's accessible. Okay. Good. Uh, as yeah. long as you're signed into YouTube, you got to have that, or else it'll make you as soon as you do that. I think I'm automatically signed in under my yeah. booth. So that's a good yeah, mo yeah, most people are. It's very easy if you've already got a Gmail account. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and I put, I put everything under playlists as well. Mm. So, like, Apple oh, cool. and Google, stuff like that. Speaking of Apple, they're doing it in an event on, on the 13th. I did won. you, did you, did you, what you said on uh, something inth? The thir the 13th. 13th. Okay, thank you. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Am I sounding okay? You're, you're very far away. Anyway. I, uh, he, I don't know what is it. I'm, I don't know. Me neither. Um, to, anyway, does anybody <laughs> have, my, have my any my other questions three, about my, the. Well, my computer, so. I don't know. I can I can hear you okay, but I'm plugged into an interface. So yeah, I, yeah, I hear you. I, I heard you just fine. Yeah. I'm on my phone, but you're no, the one. But I can I was, still. Hear. I was gonna say you could have this uh, go around, you know, and all say who we are or oh. something. But they they probably well, all know each other. Hey, you know what? So oh, is, is any is anyone using Jaws by any chance? But in this, in this I, list? I I use Jaws. Okay, so are you using the JAWS beta? Are you using the JAWS beta? 
I'm not. I'm using my good old Jaws 2020, whatever version okay. it is at. Well, right let's now. see here. I was trying to see the media the other day, but if you're using a Jaws beta, it's going to be in Jaws um, 2021. Dark key. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the hot key for to find out who's talking, you press Control Shift T. Wait. Oh, in what program, though? That, okay, that's if you're on Zoom. Oh, for your in Zoom. Oh. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so it brought me up talking because it recognizes my big mouth. So if you're talking, <laughs> I get I can find all those. <clears throat> does it lock? No, it, does it lock in the activation, or and then you have to do it again to get out? Uh, Vince, I just got your name, but no, I don't know oh. if it does that. <laughs> so okay. this yeah, is really cool. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Can someone tell me the scheme of Zoom again? I just made an account yesterday, a good old free one. Okay, Lynette Tatum. And I think you can have. Yeah, Lynette Tatum. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, what's I, the I, question? I think, you mean it actually shows my name? Yeah, you gave me your whole name. It also told me it also told me you're from New York as well. Ah, uh, well, hello. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, right. Well, I think I did that. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Ask Sean your question. Um. <laughs> She's gonna sing them to him. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what? Anyway, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Y'all are all youngins. I'm. I go back to Jaws. We won't say how far. Jaws. <laughs> I got oh, that. I did too. Back to the nineties. Yeah. Jaws oh, three point five. I started with Jaws three point five. On oh, Dos. Me too. Yep. Oh my. On <laughs> Dos. Yes. Oh my God. Somebody mentioned Dos. Oh, I still got those old floppy. Uh, those three. Floppy those three point five inch discs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, wow. Hold it now, son. Five and a quarter came first. <laughs> That's true. I don't have those anymore, though. <laughs> they don't, those are relics. Those are used as, yeah. they're not even used as cup, like, cup holders or whatever you call those things. <laughs> they're too flimsy. Coasters. <laughs> oh, coasters, I, thank you. Uh, yeah. I remember having Word Perfect on a thing. Oh, it was like, oh, stop. Pull stop. Back to these Word discs. Perfect 5.1. <laughs> yes. yes and then going on. And I got you guys beat. I took a word star class in like 1983 oh, or something. Word like star. Oh, and it yeah, was I really could... good word processor. I wish, you know, oh, I don't remember a thing about it now, but <laughs> I don't think Sean's old enough to remember that stuff. I don't know about that stuff. Wow. Word star. <laughs> I don't young. think I've heard of that one. No. Um... So yeah, I told you. Word star I've heard of, but I never used it. I heard of it too, but I never use that. I never use WordStar, but I used I did use WordPerfect. Well, that, that was, we just got a Bobby came back that we, I saw earlier. Yeah, oh. here's Bobby. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, ho ho ho. You asked a question about Zoom. Go ahead, Sean. Nice. Tell us all about Zoom. Whatever our question was. Because hey, the one I have as well. Sure. Let. Go ahead. No, no, I said your question is probably my question. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 I didn't have a question about Zoom. I, no, I, don't I, have a I question. knew that I knew that you had a question. Lynette. Oh, yeah, uh, well, right. Okay, well, we'll move along because I'm not going <laughs> Oh, okay, so you're telling me that my name did show up. Now, last it, night when I was on did. the... Thank you. When I was uh, on the uh, ACB open mic, it just showed up as uh, iPad. Or some, perhaps. Okay, but so I, yeah, this, the, maybe the difference is this: one, you're using it, you were using an iPad. Maybe it showed up in, in, in the uh, participants' list as iPad. But yeah. I'm, I'm using Jaws. I'm on my computer. I'm using Jaws, and I'm using the Jaws beta uh, okay. for 2021. And nice. so now, before time, you could use Control Two. However, there was a conflict because um, that was also used for notifications. Uh, and Zoom for your second notification in Zoom, so you will have to use the, the bypass key to get it. So now you no longer have to do that. So you could just with the new when you if you download Jaws 2021, you could uh, to use Control Shift T, and when you're on Zoom, it'll tell you who's who's working. My 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 go-to guy Tim there, uh, who was audio guy and everything else, he says, Lynette, why don't you use your computer? And because I have it, you know, I have I do. I have a microphone set up for my podcast and all of that. And I never think of doing that. And I have Zoom there, so maybe I should try that. And uh, Actually, see I think it it's great on the iPhone or iPad as long as you're not the one that's presenting. 
because yeah, you've got, I, you can do the polls, you can raise your hand, your name should show mm-hmm. up. Well, okay. I mean, well, it's, it's showing up for me. Okay. Now, now, I don't know what the deal was last week, but I tried to, I was out. So I said, oh my God, it's three. It, let, me, let me go and, and join. It wouldn't mm-hmm. let me join from my phone. It, you said it wouldn't let you join? It would not. And that was the first time I had that experience. That is interesting. Oh, yeah, it is. I shouldn't yeah. do that. There's always something to keep us, you know, it works and then it doesn't work. And there's no rhyme or reason, said it. Yeah, I have no idea. If it really goes out in the middle of a call, even if you have a good Wi-Fi signal, I've I've found that turning off Wi-Fi and flipping over to cellular a lot of times will will get uh, it back. Okay. Right, right. That some some of that kind of it was you were sounding beautiful. <laughs> kind of. Well, Bobby actually has a has a question. Bobby, go go ahead. Oh yeah, you were talking about podcasting. Am I unmuted? No. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You are. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I didn't, I, didn't ha- I didn't do all day. That's why I'm asking. But anyway, you were talking about all this podcasting and then my internet cut out on me. And mm-hmm. I'm wondering if uh, the topic is the topic for today was actually podcasting. No, the topic for today was just telling you guys a little bit about myself because I realized I hadn't done that yet. So I figured oh, cool. better do that. Yeah, and... Um, <clears throat> You know, am I allowed to ask a question about podcasting or no? No, it's forbidden. But no, yes, <laughs> yes, you are. Okay. Um, Hold on, though. I, w- I want to see if anyone has any questions first about anything about me or anything I can I can answer. I don't I don't mind talking about it. I have a question. Hey, can, sure. Do you? Because uh, I truly don't know. Are you an instructor? Do you do you teach tech or do you have another job or? is it a hobby it's it's a hobby and it's also so like right right now due to um my epilepsy it's actually gotten worse so i can't i i would not be able to keep a job um would i like one absolutely but right so for right now i'm i'm doing this voluntarily because i'm not going to sit on my butt and do nothing okay (laughs) sorry (laughs) but um you you know i uh, sorry i said you said the word but it was fine Oh no 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 no! I I meant I meant sorry, but I'm not I'm not doing it. Is what I okay. is what I meant. Gotcha. Um, but you know, so it's I I've always loved and to train individuals on technology just for free, and I know I could be making a lot of money, and I get that. But it's like you know, I love seeing the wow! I can actually I can actually use an iPhone. I can actually use an iPad mm-hmm. or what have you, and that, that's always been fun. And I know that you know. People love coming to free presentations, and it's like mm-hmm. you know this is this is kind of fun. This is something I love doing, and that's 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 why I do it. It's it's mainly just volunteer and quite fun to put on on a resume, to be honest. Yes. Oh my well, god, it's I, fantastic. <clears throat> this is Reg, and, and yeah, I definitely need some help with stuff. And and if I can't pay you, I'll just make a big contribution to the to the podcast because like you said servers don't run themselves and you know right that site's not actually up but um but if yeah, you want the you youtube wanna... thing or whatever everybody yeah. needs help with something you know yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. who was that yeah who yeah was if that you want you can that? you can, okay, you can sure. email me someone wants to know who was speaking um yeah who's the guy who's that guy talking about being philanthropic Reg. there Brad, I'm Red, I Reggie, a- and I'm in uh, Washington State in Yakima, Washington. I'm a AT specialist for our services for the blind out here. Okay, cool. I have a missing totally blind myself. Yeah. Oh, nice. I have a I have a missing socks foundation that I'm I'm looking for donations for. <laughs> missing oh, socks. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Are you, with your iPad the, questions. Are, are you talking about the white socks or the red socks? <laughs> no, no. It doesn't matter. All those little socks, man, are missing. You know, you do wash and you Sheesh. can't find them. You know, you can't find them. So. It's the borrowers. They steal them out of the dryer when you're not. It's there. somebody, yeah. They live in your house. But Reg, if you want to, if you want to send me, if you want to shoot me an email, we can we can talk about that. Even as a so I wanted to ask you about your friend Kevin that you talked about. So he did he get through uh, college and and what did he oh, get yeah. his degree in and where did he end up? What's he doing now? So he, right now he's in he's in DC and yeah we we both finished college. Um, and uh, let's see he's working, I believe he's working for. Let's see now I I should know this. 
Let me think about this. So he was in California, he, and I believe he's doing the same thing he was doing in California. So I think he's working for a, I want to say a, an office uh, in the accessibility department. Um, and so, and from what I hear, it's it's going well. The job's tough, but jobs are always jobs always can be tough. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so he's 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 doing well, and he and I keep in That's touch great. regularly. And yeah, it's it's great, you know. The, but uh, no, please. HK, you had a you had a question. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, when when you were going to school, did you go to a uh, school for the blind, Sean? No, I didn't. So, um, Durant Turner okay. or DTM, it was a school I, that uh, Stephen went to as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did too. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And anyway, it was a school that was made up of. A large chunk of special ed individuals and uh, also mainstream individuals. So no, it wasn't a school for the blind per se, but the classrooms that I were in, or sorry, that I was in, um, they were they did consist uh, blind to visually impaired in individuals. Which they don't have that school anymore. That school was that school was I don't want to say demolished, but it was I think it was torn down. Uh, yeah. yeah, and the blind schools are kind of that way now. It's just whatever they can get funding for, sort of to a point, you know. Yeah, that's kind of how the uh, how the regular uh, how DTM was. Yep, we have a lot of more blind people with other disabilities lately. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah. Oh, wow. <clears throat> can I ask a question or no? Sure. This is about you. It, um, okay, when you first started recording, oh, it has to do with you and podcasting as well. The question I wanted to ask you, because I'm thinking about maybe getting one down the road, is did you start out with after cassette tapes and all computers, you know, when computers were starting to come, did you start out with a Behringer mixer or Behringer podcasting kit and are they any good, and should I consider getting one at some point down the road? Sure. Um, so, just just let you guys know. Actually, so the the. Hold on one second. Just a second. Yeah, I have a comment about Behringer as well too. After he gets done. Sure. No. No problem. The simple the simple partials that I, I mentioned in the <coughs> recording or the focal. I just I just had one. And you guys didn't even notice anything, did you? Those, those are the, those are how uh, unnoticeable they are. And so, to answer your question, Bobby, um, I actually used a digital recorder, a, an Olympus DS30. Let it. Did you ever oh, have any of those? I had the DS. Yes, I did. I think it was a fifty. It might I still be, have it might the thirty. About, do you? Wow, well, excellent. Oh my, oh my gosh, I love that did you recorder. To Larry's. Uh, podcast at all blind cool tech were you back in that day <laughs> yes 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 i i posted that yes <laughs> oh yeah yep and uh so the i guess the answer is i started on the ds30 in october wow. let's see so the first podcast actually made it on acb radio uh which was october i want to say it was on a saturday october 16th something like that mm. um which probably isn't a Saturday. HK could tell me that. Um, but yeah. uh, um, anyway, I, we started, let's see, so that aired on November 26th of 2008. HK, what day was that? The, uh, November 26th of 08 was a Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving. Okay, that thanks. Some awesome. Wow. Wow. Ooh. So somebody like to do this. So the cool, so HK's motivational speech which was on this program that is up on technology wizard youtube site so hk actually has a really remarkable gift where he, he um he has something called hyperthymesia or highly superior autobiographical memory which okay. means in short he can remember uh every second of every day um uh, since the age of about three or four and if wow. you and if you want to, you can tell them your name and or I apologize, yeah, you know, the um, day you were born and the year you were born, and he can tell you the day 
Uh, That's awesome. And any historical fact that he knows. That's awesome. Well, I'm I'm not going to about to say the name and the year or anything. (laughs) I will let you. (laughs) Next. (laughs) How about the date? Uh, Well, what is that going to do? (laughs) August 31st. Okay. What year? I'm I'm good to go. I'm 58, so that would mean I was it was six, 1962. Yeah, I'm the senior member of the group. Uh, <laughs> you kidding me? I'm older than you. You're only three months Sorry. older than me. And and and, 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 and I, hold on, Nanette. I was born in 1958. Oh, all right now. Okay, so I, feel I get to be. <laughs> you sure do. Well, I was born in 64. Uh, oh, okay. So we're. All, I was born in 1959. Did I tell you when I was born? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, sure. I was born in May second, nineteen seventy-seven. You oh. were born on a Monday. Oh, oh my God, wow. HK, you are the best. Wow. By the way, this is Bobby Vinton, and I want to introduce myself. I really haven't had a chance to do that, and I enjoyed the podcast so cool. with you and Sean and Jim. What it was very, you? very good. Thank you. We we did that interview. When I was in Traverse City, Michigan, on Monday, August twentieth of twenty eighteen, and I'd love to get together with you when you come to get speeches. When do you think you'll be coming to New York? Oh, well, yeah. we don't yeah. have any. We don't have any events scheduled in New York. Yeah, I don't blame you because you know we do still have this <laughs> pandemic. But, but, you know, I, I hope- but I was in, I was in New York in Binghamton, New York back in May of 2018. Cool. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. next time you come, you know, I'd like to meet with you. You know, maybe I'll see about getting your contact info and we'll hook up. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Cool. So HK, HK? when. Oh, sorry. Hello, HK. Yes. Yeah, this is this is Dan. I just want to tell you that uh, that uh, headset that you have now is is really cool. Just awesome. It's just amazing how how great your voice comes through. What what uh, can you give me the manufacturer and the model on that one? All I know is it's it's Logitech, right, oh, Grammy? Okay. Logitech. That's what it is. I bet Sean headset? knows. Is it a microphone or is it a recorder? Or is it a headset. The headset. Oh, oh gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Probably USB headset. Computer, I, I think so. very good, by the way. Uh, yeah, it's a microphone. Yeah. It's a, yep. But, Beautiful audio. Yeah. Cool. Man. You said 1962, Lynette, and what I, was the day? Uh, August thirty first. Okay, of what? With that? Yep. that yep. was on a in sixty two. That was on a Friday, and on that day in nineteen ninety seven, Princess Diana died. Oh, thank you. I, you know what? I kind of remember the August thirty first part, right? And I, I remember saying, "Did you have to?" <laughs> <laughs> Poor soul. Thank you. Well, there's something about Princess Diana that I want to share with you. Um, you know that song, Candle in the Wind, by Elton sure. John. Elton John, yeah. Oh, yeah. Elton John actually revamped Candle in the Wind. Yeah, he remade it. Princess yeah. Diana's yeah. death. He did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he remade it in her death in 97. <laughs> I wanted to address Bobby's question real quick about... Um, and yeah, I, I think having some type of little mixer and, you know, the Behringer stuff is fairly accessible. I'm a little bit of a live musician just playing in bands and I've had uh, one of their keyboard amplifiers that died after about a year. Uh, they're very difficult to work on because they're all, uh, they, they put everything on one board on one chip basically. Mm-hmm. And if that circuit board goes out, you're, it's going to cost you more to fix than it is to replace it 
But as far as equipment to get started with, there's there's nothing wrong with the Behringer stuff. I mean, you know. Yeah. Well, but, yeah. I'm gonna you chime definitely in. Definitely need some kind of a mixer. I think these days it's very helpful to be able to plug in sources and everything like that, you know. Oh yeah. I have a pile mixer. It's a new it's new and I have not yet done anything with it. So I'm hoping that my our our I call him my burgermeister meister burger there our band leader can maybe if we can ever get together can you know tell me what cables to get and I used to have an oh my god I had a mixer but it was definitely uh, not you know up to date or anything back in the day but I would definitely love to be able to do that because I would just like to I would like Jaws to come through my computer and I was very happy to hear that studio recorder which is my audio editor of choice has an update oh yay and finally oh that's awesome okay yeah hey, uh, when did it update i'm not certain but my wonderful audio guy tim uh who does the cooking in the he produces the cooking in the dark podcast oh i remember that yep yes. mm-hmm. um yeah he said that you go to help and then you i think check for updates oh that's yeah. awesome that is awesome I- no, yeah, I'm going to turn around. Yep, yep, <laughs> studio recorder. I remember yeah. seeing that. <coughs> in, uh, I've that developed that. in-house at ATH. Oh, yes, correct. It was. What was, say again? Everybody was, what? Oh, my what parents would not buy me studio recorder because they think it's obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not though. I oh, had my- it back in the XP days, though. Well, but you know, things do. I mean, it took a while for it to get upgraded, and honestly, I almost fell off my chair when I heard, but I was so thrilled because I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I actually heard the same thing, that it was now obsolete. But again, since I've not played with it since uh, about maybe 2003, I really don't know. Mm. I'll tell my parents it came back to life and see what yeah. they about me getting it. Yeah. Let me tell yeah. you, I was so, whether it was back to life or not, it's so, you know, when you get something ingrained in your brain and you don't have to think, since I'm chief cook and bottle washer, for my podcast, I said, uh, you know what? I'm going to go with what I know. So, <laughs> no, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah plus, now, now that it has updated, I'm yeah. I'm going to get that. That that was neat. I I, I, I saw never that at had the convention, it. but never got that. But they're really good Funny. documentation and really easy to use. And I just hoped when they updated it that they would give the ability to put in some kind of noise <laughs> reduction plugins and I'd be totally oh, happy with it. Oh yeah, that would for be for transcribing good. cassettes and stuff would be nice. Uh, mm-hmm. That's cool. I just wanted the ability to do MP3 because now I'm going into Gold Wave to encode it there. Oh goodness. Oh yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I I definitely want to be able to record an MP3. If I purchase Studio Recorder which now it has an update, I'm thinking about doing um I I definitely want to be able to on you know with that app I want to save the file in MP3 or Wave whichever you know Wave, wave is actually pretty good I mean yeah. assuming someone has a I like know, MP3 that big, but, better eh, it depends yeah it's, it's this is all is, audio file type stuff oh I mean yeah. I've heard it said I heard it said from a reliable source that one time that you when you when you actually make a recording. That you want it, especially something you you know that's you want it to be good quality. It's you want it in wave. It's best to to yeah, oh, make yeah. the original recording in wave, edit mm-hmm. it in wave, and then convert it to MP3 after that, all the editing. Right. Yep. Yes. Yep. You yep. Yep. Which only it. takes about ten it, it seconds. Maintains totally. the quality. Yeah. It maintains the quality. It does. Mm-hmm. It does. Can I throw out you know, one MP3 other piece of is content? more lossy, and it's you know you you lose quality as you right as you use it. it. It's all. For a lot of my recordings, I use a, an Eltronex recorder, and okay. it's a great El, El, Eltronex, and it's really good. I have that, yeah. Yeah, and I that. love it. But if I'm doing voice recordings, I find that Wave sounds better. Well, there but you now, go. if I'm doing other recordings, like this summer, well, I recorded a fireworks display, and the MP3 sounded a, sounded a lot better. Can I just throw out one other piece of software that Jonathan and I both agree on, Jonathan Mosen? Sure. Orphonic <laughs> Leveler. Oh, my goodness. So when you – and th- that's the last piece of my um, podcast creation because once I put the – do the M- – well, actually, after I do the wave or make the wave, everything is there. I think it's all good. 
then I put it through our phonic because that is a leveler and you know it'll bring make the highs. I want a leveler. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, all phonic leveler. How much does it cost? Huh. They again on? I don't cost. think I think it might be forty dollars, maybe. Oh, maybe? that's not bad at all. No, it's not bad. But I would look mm. it up. But you know, you get these things. I mean, I got this thing over a year ago, so who remembers? And I haven't had to look up the price, but but I don't think it's cost prohibitive. Oh, good, good. Yeah, well, yeah. for your forty dollars, it's not much money at all. No. And will it process no. on an MP3 file? Well, what I do is I actually do the wave, and then I uh, gold wave it with to MP3. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that I've used MP3 gain a lot, and that is a free program to level up my whole music collection. Um, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold the phone. Because I have a huge <laughs> collection because, you know, I'm old. And I have done all of these things to get it into MP3. And that was one of the things when I'm listening to my collections, some of the older songs are lower in volume and some of the newer songs are, you know, they're all mm -hmm. in you know, Oh, yeah. we we can we can take that offline but it is it's a non-destructive edit that they, they could be undone and you can add a whole folder or a whole hard drive all at the same time and as oh, long as you're prepared to just let your you. computer run for two or three days it will level out all your files and sean i, oh, I just wonder if you played with that i imagine that no I, I i i didn't even know i was i was but, i was hoping for something like that i was saying yeah. out loud here I wish I could level all of my, you know, music files. Oh, I have the same issue too. How much is MP3 gain? It's, it's free. free. It's free. And does it still free. exist? It does. It's on SourceForge.net, but it runs fine on Windows 10 or wherever. It, and it updates. It's very books. accessible. You can minimize it to the tray, and then you can check your system tray every once in a while with Insert F11 or Windows V, and it'll oh. tell you the percentage of how far it's gotten through the whole oh. job. And oh. it really doesn't slow down your computer when it's running. It can just kind of run in the background and and and. It, you know, you've got several different kinds of gain, but the default is track gain, and that'll just get all your tracks pretty much the same volume, and it does a really good job. Now, let me get this right. Source Forge is that's where I'm going, and then I'm looking for MP3 gain. Did I get that yeah. right? Yeah. I, I mean, I would Google it. It's sourceforge.net, but that site is kind of complicated, so I just okay. put in download MP3 gain so you can get to the right page. But yeah. <laughs> and does it update? Or not anymore. I don't think it's been updated in a while. That MP3s have been open source for years now. So. Wow. Oh, mille grazie, as they say in Italian. But many thank yous. <laughs> wow, man. Awesome. Yeah. I got a question for HK. Is it HK the one? Yes. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. Do Ooh. leap years throw you off? No. <laughs> okay. well, good. Hey, HK. Well, I got a question. Do you where were you when certain, uh, you know, major major news events occurred? Like, where were you? Uh, what were you doing, and where were you in the day of nine eleven? Well, I was actually, I was nine eleven oh one. I was in school that day, and so, I did not know that anything real bad had happened until. Grammy picked me up early from school that oh. day to go to a doctor's appointment and she asked me had I heard any news that day at school and I said well no not really she said well uh, she told me what had happened oh. I was in school I was in high school the day Reagan got shot hit by John Hinckley and heard it all heard all about it when they came well I first heard about it when my mom came to get me and said it said but this my resource teacher did you know Reagan got shot and it said well, wow. it. It said, oh, oh. Put away. <clears throat> and then we heard about it all in the news that was a major news event of the day yeah, there are some events including, that take including place Reagan's, including Reagan's sense of humor honey I say things like honey I forgot to duck and Who's minding oh. the store? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Sean, I feel bad for you because somebody I heard was threatening to kill and kidnap your governor, and that's not good. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, that was well, a trip. Yeah. What's going on then? I was, yeah, was right. Crazy. 
they wow. would not. Yikes. Does anybody have any more questions about today's event before I stop the recording? Oh, I didn't know you well, were don't recording. ask it once. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I do. Okay. Um, before Technology Wizard, mm -hmm. what was your website, the first website? Was that techwizard.info or you changed it? So the very first website was technologywizard.t35mb.com or something like that. It was an open ad site. Uh, I think I think that was the first first website we ever had. Then the I'm first sorry, official I'm website. Oh, no, it's fine. Because yeah. I didn't find out about you until <laughs> Blind Cool Tech came along, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nope. But and, anybody have any other questions? And I'll stop the recording, and then we can just talk about whatever. Well, I would like to learn about how to play laser tag, but... <laughs> it's actually quite never fun. did that so, all right. yeah it's, it, see okay so i'm not obviously as you guys can tell i'm not the normal blind person like i see i have two-sided brothers and so when i one younger one older as mentioned in the interview so when i was growing up i always wanted to do what they could what they did maybe i couldn't do it as well but i always wanted to do it so Whenever things like playing laser tag or just doing something sighted came along, I was like, okay, I want to do this too. So um, when I was, one thing I didn't mention, but it, um, but when I was growing up at, at uh, DTM, uh, I didn't have very good orientation and mobility skills. And thankfully those have improved a lot since then. But I say that because I went to a, 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 uh, in a laser tag arena with a church group of mine and i remember shooting at this uh they have this this motion sensor that would shoot at you as you walked by and i remember just standing there and shooting at the motion sensor well obviously if i went back in time i wouldn't obviously be able to you know uh run around or you know anything like that and shoot people perfectly with the laser tag gun of course um but i think i could do a lot better just you know, by listening to sound clues, listening for sound clues, that is. But I don't know, just just something that I, I kind of think back on when I think about laser tag. But yeah, it's it's quite fun. I, I don't get the chance to play it often enough, but they actually made a very accessible laser tag uh, unit out there. It's called the uh, Laser Tag BRX. Quite expensive, but it's purely audio based. What wow. makes it ex well, it's is like it that one? Oh, it's audio based. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Based? Yep, yep, completely audio based. Completely, uh, that's the word I missed. Thank you. Oh no, no problem. So here at Chicago, uh, speaking about, the, um, they started a. Uh, I I used to work for the Chicago Park District. Actually, I just left there to work for another job. But one of the things we started before I left, and this is at other parts of the country, and I don't know if anybody tried it yet. We have the um, the the, the blind archery. You know, where you listen to a tone and you're shooting at the targets. I used to do that I've heard Phoenix. of that. Wow, I have never heard of that. It's, it's, it's really, <coughs> really, really awesome, and it's you know, uh, to do. So it's it's really, really cool. And I have nice. gone to Ski for Light International in the last couple of years. Well, I don't even think they did it last year. But Is they this brought still in oh wow. yeah, um, and oh, they, the winners cool. of the 10K race they take over to Norway for free, and they get to, you get to participate in wow. theirs. But it, it's been uh, the last one, I think, was in Truckee, California, and before that, Cranby, Colorado. And I just keep up with it. I'm not that good at the cross-country skiing, but what they have started doing now is the biolage event. So you put the uh, laser gun to your shoulder, and you, you, uh, uh, you know, adjust the, uh, just try to get to the highest pitch, and you shoot, and then you get points for that so it's all audio based with that oh, okay. oh nice nice yeah, they, they had a, and then you uh, jump audio. up and keep skiing but they're saying you have to be still and you even your heartbeat can throw it off you know oh you goodness have to learn to relax and and just uh, you're listening to that tone and trying to get it as high as possible pointing at a, a target that's like you know somewhere and mm -hmm. that's yeah it's, it's fun oh yeah okay yeah any, any other questions? I'd just like to thank you for a fabulous conversation. Glad I here, here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah thank you, Sean. 
It's a great yeah, interview. I'm, I'm going to have to really work on yeah. making more meetings. You know, before uh, when I first came, like, okay, my city is always free. So then we went to, we John Denner went, came to your, your first meeting and it was like really great. And then after that, um, everything just kind of like went crazy. And they, everybody gives me a zillion, thing, zillion things to do on Sundays. It happens. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. 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 No problem. Last Sunday, I said, last Sunday I said, hey, I'm free. Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Well, well, last Sunday I was actually out, and I said, "Okay, I use my phone, and Zoom wouldn't connect." <laughs> like, what the hell? Yeah, that that's Bam. that's weird. Yeah, no problem. I, I'm I'm glad I'm glad to do it, and uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the recording. But I want to thank you guys for uh, joining today, and hopefully, you guys learned something about me. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I will see you guys next week, where we will discuss braille displays and uh, talk oh, all things braille. Yeah. Well, that would be a lot of fun. Oh. I'm looking forward to that one. So I will tell yep. people, no, I can't do a, anything for you. <laughs> 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 Sounds good. Sounds good. Sorry. All right. Take care. Nice everybody. to meet everybody. All right, all right. Y'all take care now. Okay. Thanks. Okay. You too. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.